All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we got the one, the only, the ever so talented Night Train 357. How you doing this evening? Man, I'll write you a check for that intro. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? I've been doing it so long that honestly, man, it just comes naturally with me. All right, cool. Then I rescind the check. <laughs> hey, man, no worry on the check, man. I, I, I love doing what I do. I, I, I just do everything for free, man. So no, no worries on the coin. I love what you do. Uh, you can hear me okay, right? I can hear you perfectly, man. I can hear you great. And so can the listeners as well, man. And uh, taking you back, like, right to the beginning of your career, man, like, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Um, my father. My father is a bass guitar player. He actually opened up for George, pa- for, uh, George Clinton in Parliament back in the day in Washington, D.C., and uh, he played bass guitar. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm a graphic designer by trade. And uh, when I went to college, I started doing graphic art. And then, you know, some, you know, at some point when you realize that this is the rest of your life, and it's a creative outlet, but you're like, nah, I need a real, another creative outlet. And so I started going into music and hip hop, and I started following the lane. And um, my father passed away, which is why where I get my name, Night Train Three Five Seven, was a CB radio name. So I, I took on the name to pay homage to him. I was like, okay, cool. Well, let's 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 try this, this music thing out. And when your father actually performed for uh, for Clinton, uh, Mr. Clinton, were 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 you there for that experience, or was this something that happened before you were born? Oh yeah, that happened definitely before I was born. When I was growing up, my father was a uh, bass guitar player, and uh, but he was, it was more on the amateur level. He wasn't performing for shows. He had settled down, had a family and stuff. But every night I came home, he was playing the bass and making me whole house rattle and so i was like yo you know um i loved it you know it was like it, it, it was normal to me to hear him playing the bass guitar and you know you, you, you know when you, you know your father's gonna you know, talk a lot about Chris Hunter, right most definitely man I, I agree with that man you know what i mean and look at it like this way it's better than an alarm clock at least you wake up to a sound of a bass guitar yeah oh yeah exactly well no i didn't wait yeah wake up to it um, that and the Citizens Band Radio. You know, my father was really big in a ham radio, though. And so um, that was something annoying to, uh, to have to deal with. So I preferred the bass guitar because Night Train 357, the radio personality, would bleed through all the television. So imagine growing up trying to watch Animaniac, and every time Wacko and Yakko and Bell would make a joke, you'd hear somebody over the radio that sounded like your dad bleeding through the speakers. So um, I enjoyed the bass more than I enjoyed the, the, the ham radio. And, and also, of course, how we got connected was uh, via ADST Media. But I want to ask you, how did yourself and ADST actually get connected? So we, so ADST and I were like besties at this point. Um, ADST is amazing. I met him uh, through the Women's March, actually, about four, about four years ago. Um, so I'm not trying not to get too big into politics, but let's just say we don't like the guy in the office right now, and there were a lot of people who were marching against him and for the sake of women's rights. So my, so my wife, uh, who had just um, unfortunately injured herself at the time because we were both going through a black belt cycle where we were training for our first degree black belt, um, she hobbled along, got on crutches, and hit the streets of Washington, D.C., and that same day we did the Women's March, um, we also had a show. I had a show um, later that evening. And uh, I, uh, first time I had ever met Nonchalant as well. She's a DC, a DC legend. Watch, shout out to Washington, D.C. And, uh, and ADST was there as well. And ADST hit me up. And, you know, when you go on that, when, you're in, when you're doing music, a lot of people come to you like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, let's do some music together. And you kind of nod your head and say, yeah, yeah sure, uh-huh, and then you can get moving. But Dre was um, was like, no, I want to work with you. And I was like, okay, you want to work with me? I said, I want to work with you. And so we ended up working from there. We worked on a couple of projects. And then, boom, it was like, all right, let's work on a whole album. And then me, his, most of the stuff on my newest project is his production, is a, his production that he's done. So, you know, he has a, 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 he has a, he has a hat in this race. And so he's trying to push it hard to kind of get the word out there. And we've been friends ever since. He's invited to the family brunch. 
Hey, man, you know what? You can't go wrong as well uh, with ADST Media. He's a phenomenal guy. He's helped our station along well. And also going back to when you said earlier on uh, when I asked the question, how you said you don't really like who's currently in office. I'm going to be honest, man. As you already know, I'm in Canada. And whilst Canadians, we don't even like Donald Trump. So it's pretty bad, you know, when another country even hates the person in office when they're not even running their country. So I I'm glad to see I'm glad to hear that he's packing his bags and getting the fuck out. Yeah, I'm not a fan. You know, I try not to get into the politics too much because I, I don't, I've definitely gone to Facebook jail a couple of times, cursing some people out. But I don't know how it feels on the international tip. But I can tell you straight up that you know there's a lot of people, especially in DC. That's the thing that people don't understand and get when you get twisted about DC is you know people see DC as a caricature of itself. So Washington D.C., the D.M.V., the surrounding areas, have started being the, the the mecca of whatever the politician is running is at that moment in time for the rest of the world. And the answer is no; it's not even close to that. In fact, not to, again, not getting too deep in the politics, but recently, 95 percent of the Washington D.C. area voted against Donald Bingus, and I won't even name, I won't even say his name, Drumpf. That's his real name, Drumpf. <laughs> I agree with that, man. You know, you don't you don't want to give the radio airwaves any any types of diseases, you know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't need. I don't need. I don't need them catching his version of Corona. But um. Anyway, <laughs> DC is uh, DC is popping, and that's how Dre was. You know, it's crazy because it's been a crazy four years, but it's been really positive on a personal tip, and a lot of it is owed to Dre, ADST, and all the connections that we're making in the city. And actually, internationally now, so thank you for having me on board. I appreciate it. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome. I, I just like keeping real hip-hop alive, man. And, you know, when ADST actually shot me your music, I was like, damn, man, this th this guy's good. So that right then and there, I was like, yo, I got to book this guy for an interview, man. So at the end of the day, man, you know, you keep making the music, we're going to keep spinning it here on Outlaw Radio. That's what's up, man. I appreciate it, man. Um, I don't know what to say except, uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of jams out there. There's a lot of guys, a lot of artists out there that are doing it up, and it's great to get that kind of recognition and, most importantly, keep it to the music. We can talk controversy and all sorts of crazy stuff and, 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 and all the marketing and promotion to a blue in the face, but when I listen to the radio, when I listen to your radio show, it's like, man, it's, it's, it's the music, man, and that's what really gets me going. And also, man, also, when well, we're on the topic of ADST Media, I also noticed as well that via his website, I saw a post that you were actually featured by Public Enemies Chuck D. On how, I have to ask you, how does it feel to be recognized by one of hip-hop's hip most influential artists of all time? It put me in tears. And I'll tell you why. One, because we're just hearing him and then, get, and then knowing that they like my music enough to, uh, or that um, Chuck D like my music. I mean, this guy is a legend. He's a Hall of Famer, and I would, would never expect him that. When I hear, when things like that happen, and I feel so blessed, and I know that everybody is having a rough 2020, I can't help but to say, man, it personally wasn't that bad for me, because stuff like that, it was the greatest film in the world. worst part about it is I've been so busy lately that I haven't been pushing it, because I've been telling couple people, but I'm, you know, my inner circle and stuff like that, but that is a huge accomplishment to be recognized by one of the greats, and for him to have him, and I'm in tears thinking about it, like, it's just, it's crazy, man, it's like, I, like, like, my stuff is dope enough for Chuck D, okay, all right, cool. Hey, man, if Chuck D is showing you love and liking what you do, man, don't ever change, because you're most definitely going down the proper path within your music career. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed, you know, um, now if somebody else can write me a check, you know, <laughs> we can stop. But no, I appreciate it, man, I appreciate it. And also, I noticed as well that you were also a Whammy-nominated uh, artist for Best uh, Rap Album and Hip Hop Song. I have to ask you, how does it feel to be Whammy-nominated, and of course, what was it like being there and seeing your name on that big screen? Um, I don't care. Uh, it's, it's an award show. For people who don't know, the Whammies is the Washington Area Music Awards, and um, it recognizes local talent, anybody who's from the B&B. And this includes not only local artists, but also artists who have residents here, like Wale and Maya. 
Maya's gone independent. I think Wale is uh, still um, working with, uh, I think he's working with, actually. But um, it didn't mean a lot. It, it didn't mean as much as I thought it would mean to me. I mean, it's great to be recognized, but I'll tell you what really meant something to me was going to the whammies, going to these award shows, and meeting these local legends and these really amazing, talented artists. I made so many connections by being nominated that to, to meet the other artists was more important to me. That's actually how I met Cecily, which is um, a singer, one of the one of the features on my um, latest project, The Nightlife. Is I saw her. She had won for best soul album for a uh, best soul artist, and I said, "Yo, I, I gotta have you on board." And then you know, so that kind of that's the real reward. You know, it's like yeah, it's great to get a trophy and you know whatever, but it's really what's really exciting is meeting as many people in the art scene as possible. That's what really gets me going. Hey, man, you know, and that, that's also good as well that you actually made those connections because at the end of the day, just being there, having your presence, a lot of people are going to notice that a lot more than, than just your name on a screen. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I'm not, too, I don't want to toot my own horn, but, you know, just walking down the street in certain areas in the D.C. area, you know, every other time I go to Washington, D.C., because I live just on the outskirts of D.C., Maryland, um, you know, somebody recognizes me, and it's a really good feeling. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they don't my train, and I'm like, who? Wait, do I owe somebody any money? No. No, it's really just people very excited and know me to an extent in that area, and, and, and more importantly, know the music, because, you know, I'm not trying to be a celebrity. I just do it for the love of the music. And also, uh, while doing my research for this interview, I also noticed that your first single... Cosmic Cruise was actually Reverb Nation's number one hip hop song for Washington area. For, sorry, for Washington D.C. area for six months straight. I have to ask you, how does it feel to be number one in your city for six months straight? Um, it feels great, man. It feels like I'm. It feels getting the respect. You know, it's like when you go out of your way to make something and, and put yourself out there and to get some kind of positive response to have people like. I'll be real with you. Um, tomorrow's my birthday. Hey, man, happy, uh, happy, happy early birthday, birthday man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And I really actually don't celebrate my birthday. You know, I get that from my grandma. We're not really birthday people. But when I see my friends, my family, my, my you know, the fans that I have, the people who admire my music, play, spin, that to me is is a, is a huge accomplishment. It's not. It's not. I mean, no. No disrespect to anybody who wants to celebrate their birthday and celebrate that they're born. But man, the, the accomplishment is when I, someone tags me and says I'm listening to Cosmic Cruise, or I hear a DJ spinning the music and they're playing a song like that. And that's why I'm number one. It's like it. 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 It's. It, it's heart. It's heartfelt as a creative. As a. And I'm an artist through and through. So it's not just. The graphic design, I mean, I'm sorry, not just the music, but it's also me as a graphic artist. It's me as a martial artist. It's every aspect of my life is based in creativity. And so to get that kind of response to people, man, that's my birthday. That's my birthday present. I'm just I'm just sleeping all day tomorrow. That's all I'm doing. Hey, man, you know, it's, it's some much needed R&R is the best route to go. And one thing I could ask you, man, when you say you're, your own gra when you're the graphic designer, do you create all the graphic design work for, for yourself as an artist? Yes, all of it, and the music videos. Um, I had some friends of mine, uh, my friend Simab uh, Mizra, which is an incredible videographer, uh, shoot us in 4K, which was a Cosmic Cruise music video. And then uh, under quarantine, I taught, taught myself motion graphics and building outer spacing. So if you haven't checked out the video for Cosmic Cruise, that is completely post-edited by myself, as well as the next single, which was uh, Make the Money, featuring myself, uh, Ethan Spalding from Trap Rock, also from DMV, and my cousin Roan, which we also worked on a project together with ADFT, a couple songs too. Um, and uh, and that was completely animated video. So all those graphic uh, design elements, the album covers, everything is done by me. And I got to say as well, man, you know, you use some phenomenal graphic artwork as well. And the good thing is, it's less money for you as an artist. Like with me with the radio station, I do all the graphic design work as well, and it really does save time and most definitely saves money. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's the easiest thing to do. You know, I don't tell many people I do graphic design because a lot of people 
I don't really want to work with. So we're like, oh yeah, you know, um, let's, uh, let's 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 work on this uh, design layout. It's like, ah, that's kind of my 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 fun time. So it's like, uh, you know, there's a handful of people where I'm like, okay, let's let's work together. And then there's some people I'm like, eh, it's gonna cost you because uh, yeah, man, I only have a limited amount of time. But yeah, for myself. I think the most difficult part about being a visual artist and a performing artist is you're the worst um, critic. Because some people are like, I just get it out there. But uh, you wouldn't, I mean, I can tell you right now, I probably came out with about four different album covers before I figured the, the, the cover of the, net, the late, latest project I did. And the only reason I choose pur- purple, for people who haven't seen it, is, um, is because of my wife's favorite color. So, there you go. Hey, man, it blends in good. You know, happy wife, happy life, right? Amen. Yeah, I wrote a song about it. That's on another project. <laughs> and also, I noticed as well that you actually had the opportunity to perform with Slick Rick and Biz Mark. I have to ask you, what was it like to be up there performing with two hip-hop pioneers? And of course, did you have the opportunity to meet those two legendary guys after the show as well? Um, Actually, no. I did not get to meet either one of them. I did meet Biz Marquis at a separate uh, situation. Biz Marquis is local. Um... Slick was actually late to the show, and um, I'm a I'm a very punctual guy. So I think me and, and, and my my cousin Roan, which is with me, um, uh, we were working on the same. Uh, we were on stage together. Uh, he's military. My, my half my family's military, and so we were very like, oh, you got to be on time. You got to be there at six. Okay, we'll be at five forty-five. I think Slick was late, uh, which was not his fault. I think it was a flight issue. So we didn't actually get to hang out with him. Biz, on the other hand, Biz killed his set. Um, by that point, we were really excited to just be in the presence of that greatness. Um, I met Biz much earlier on, actually casually, uh, at a Best Buy. Uh, I didn't think it was Biz Marquee at first, and so I started um, whistling just a friend. And then he rolled his eyes at me, and I said, oh, my God, it's Biz Marquee. <laughs> <laughs> Like, was it like a positive roll your eyes, or was it, or it was like, oh, my God, one of these guys? <laughs> yeah, it was it was, it, it was the latter. It was like, okay, yeah, it's just, oh, God, I got to hear this brother again. Hey, hey, I didn't know. I thought, I didn't know. <laughs> hey, but you know what? It's actually good to do it. It sounds bad. It's good to do it like that than walking up being like, yo, Bismarcky, and then it's like, whoa, you're not Bismarcky, you know? So it's, in a way, it gets it gets the right, 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 right. And Biz, Biz is actually, but since then, you know, um, since that show, I, you know, chatted them out and we got to talk a little bit, you know, and just kind of, you know, be in each other's space, you know. But I think it's just great to be around those type of, those, those pioneers, you know. Um, the one thing I regret the most from that show was picking his brain just about some of the, the stories that I'm sure he has. And those are my favorite. When I hear those behind the scenes about, what really goes down? I love. I'm. I'm. A, I'm an analyst. I love hearing those stories of how like specific events in their lives or the songs that they created happen. Because man, you know, you can learn a lot from that. Hey, I'm the same way, man. And I, I think that's really why I'm really passionate about these interviews because I, I love stories, man. It's weird. I'm a grown ass man, but I love it. I call it story time, man. So you know, uh, we we're on the same page on that one. Oh, I love story time. Yeah, I got a lot. Of, I got a whole bunch of stories. You know, tell me, ask me anything. I can tell you about the time I was, um, you know, went to jail for prostitution. You just let me know. <laughs> but also, I noticed as well that I, uh, more on the topic of you opening up for individuals, I also noticed as well that, uh, and also a guest that I actually have coming up here soon. I think in that next month, you actually had the opportunity to, to uh, perform with Black Sheep. I have to ask you, what was that experience like being up there with that iconic hip hop duo? Again, it was it was amazing. You know, it's like you know, this is my lane. This, this is this is the hip hop which I grew up on, which is working with these incredible artists that I admire. And I'll tell you one thing about Black Sheep and and and, and, and Wu Tang Clan. I've opened for Wu Tang or a couple members of Wu Tang Clan. It's seeing the energy that they bring, you know, right there in front of your face and getting excited and seeing the, the crowd get excited. Half half of me is speaking out because I'm a fan, but the other half is taking notes. Every time I go to a show, even as a spectator, I'm analyzing how they do things, what they do, and how they move the crowd. And then what I do in most performances, whether I'm opening for somebody or I'm going there just to observe or enjoy or be entertained, I'm taking notes because 
the odd, the you know, obviously when COVID is over, but when you're you want to give people the best experience that they can possibly have. And I can tell, I can guarantee you, when I see guys like Black Sheep, like Joel Ortiz, like you know, um, uh, uh, rest in peace, Spike Dog, but you know, a Tribe Called Quest, and I see the kind of power that they bring on the microphone, what they demand on that microphone, it's inspiring. I most definitely agree, man. I really do. <clears throat> but one thing I do got to ask you as well, man, the, the reason why you're here is because on uh, August 21st of this year, you actually dropped your newest album called Nightlife. I have, have to ask you, can you tell our listeners a bit more about that record? And of course, where can we actually buy ourselves a copy? You can buy an actual physical copy at nighttrain357.com. And I also want to note that for everybody who purchases a copy, a portion of the proceeds will go to help people in Washington, D.C., who were um, uh, gig workers who were affected negatively by the impacts of COVID-19. I'm trying to do my best to help the community. And I've actually expanded that um, reach to other outlets, which I feel are important, like uh, Color of Change, which is a nonprofit organization helping um, African Americans in, uh, in the United States um, deal with racial injustice, and also Fair Fight Georgia, because, uh, you know, not to go too deep into politics, but shout out to Stacey Abrams, because she has been fighting a good fight down there. There's some uh, turmoil going on in Georgia uh, when we need to uh, take back the Senate and actually get some policy changes. So just trying to do my best to um, give, provide good music and bring, let people, um, what, what am I looking for? Let make sure that people are, are are know that their money is going towards something positive. So yeah, Night Train three five seven dot com. And if you don't want to buy the record, it's streaming everywhere as well. And also, I saw on YouTube uh, something about uh, Nightlife the the sorry Nightlife the limited series. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about the limited series. And of course, like what made you decide to venture into that in that side of things? Well, there's two reasons why I ventured into that, and I'm still working on the series right now. I wanted to do something. This album is a little bit more personal. Not so intimate, but very personal, meaning that there are subject matters and things that I, I want to touch on, various um, name drops and things that are relative to myself that are in, enabling my, giving me the ability to tell my own story. And so the limited series is really about breaking down each one of those um, songs that are on the album. Another reason is really just to give people a little bit more insight into the project and how important and how much this felt. This is my first project I've ever pressed in vinyl. And uh, it, 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 it's surreal to hear your voice on wax for the first time. And so I was like, I want to uh, get as much as I can out of this. And I also want to, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd, so when I go into the booth, every line that I, uh, I put together, it has a purpose. You know, there's a Transformer EP, because I'm a huge Transformer fan. Um, shout out to Fresh Skills in Canada, because uh, I want to work with him. Um, great, great, great producer. Uh, there is a, a handful of, uh, of details in every line that I drop where everything means something. And so it gave me an opportunity to break down those meanings. And I have to ask you, Night Train, what is next for you? Is there anything during this interview I happen to miss? Anything else you still want to promote? We still have you here live on Outlaw Radio FM? Yeah, um, uh, check out nighttrain357.com for other things. Uh, there are plenty of, uh, there's plenty of the content that I have done before. I think a big... Um, Re, uh, there was a big resurgence for an older uh, older song I did called My Life Matters, which was, uh, you know, a little bit about the Black Lives Matter movement and about some of the injustices going on in the world. I'm actually giving out for free, but 100% of the proceeds uh, also go to nonprofit organizations. I would also like to um, ha let you know a little, t uh, let the audience know that I am really big into nerd rap. Um, I'm actually working on a brand new project that will be coming out next year. Um, that is an all Transformer EP. Um, I just worked on a, a new new song for it uh, the other day, actually. And I'm working on a couple of remixes and also some new music videos coming up. There, we're going to have a re we're going to have add a couple more tracks or a bonus album 
that's attached to the nightlife. I'm working on that right now with ADST. And um, I'm also working on the Transformer thing. And I'm also thinking about doing a couple of other. I, I have my, my, my hands dipped in a lot of different pots right now. And so I'm in that stage of creation where there's multiple things that are going to manifest. And uh, I try to keep people excited because, you know, get ready. 2021 is going to be dangerous in a good way. And also, this is the time in the interview there, Night Train, that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the Outlaw Radio FM airwaves. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And, of course, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated everything Night Train 357 if they're not already doing so. Yeah, um, everything. I'm usually mo- I'm mostly on Instagram, so check me out. Have a conversation with me. Come on, let's sit around and virtually drink a beer. Nitrain three five seven dot com. That's two T N I G P T R A I N three fifty seven. Yes, like the gun, but I'm kind of anti gun. Anyway, uh, you can also catch me on Twitter at Train three five seven. You can catch me on Facebook at Nitrain three five seven. I think I got a TikTok, but I haven't opened it up yet. Uh, but mostly you just Google the brother, and I'm all over the place. And follow me at Nitrain three five seven on YouTube. I'm everywhere. I'm in your ear holes. You can't. Get enough of me. I will drive you insane. I will knock on your door and say, hey, why aren't you listening? No music. (laughs) But I got to say, Night Train, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy evening and taking over the airwaves, man. It was an absolute honor and most definitely a privilege, and I hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Man, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Shout out to all of Canada. I have never done a, a, an interview outside of the States. I love your station. I've been listening for a week. It's crazy. You're dangerous. You're taking over the world. Let's go. Hey, man, I appreciate you. That's what I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying to take over radio and make it mine. So, you know what I mean? I'm glad to, I'm glad for that positive feedback, man. It makes me hungry to keep doing it even more. So, thank you so much, Night Train. All right. Thank you.